So this is the birthplace of modern genetics at Columbia University called the Fly Room of T.H. Morgan. He worked on Drosophila melanogaster, the fruit fly, to reveal the mysteries of genetic inheritance and linkage. In this video, we will be discussing the questions asked by the two great scientists, Mendel and Morgan. Are genes inherited together? How Mendel calculated his dihybrid ratio? How he got this 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio? And how Morgan discovered linkage step by step within 5 to 10 minutes. To get an understanding, let us begin like this. Chromosome 1 of human genome is made up of approximately 2000 genes. So, as you see, this is the chromosome 1. It is tightly packed with genes. The question posed by Mendel was, are there genes that are inherited together? From his experiment, he proposed that they are not inherited together or proposed the law of independent assortment. Later, Morgan found out that some genes are inherited together and he proposed genetic linkage. Let us see how they discovered these concepts. What is linkage? As you see, this is a chromosome, gene 1 and gene 2. This is very close or this is very near. These genes are called linked genes. Genetic linkage is the tendency of genes or alleles that are very close together in a chromosome to be inherited together as a single unit during meiosis phase of sexual reproduction. Let me make it more clear. So you can see these genes are on different chromosomes. Gene 1 is on this chromosome and gene 2 is on this chromosome. So these are not linked. They are inherited independently. Or if both these genes are on the same chromosome, if they are far apart, then also they are not linked, they are inherited independently. Now let us see how Mendel proposed his law of independent assortment. Then only we could understand what is linkage? Let's take only two traits, the seed color, yellow and green, seed shape, round and wrinkled, selected by Gregor Mendel for his studies. Let's begin with monohybrid cross. As we know, this is yellow and this is green colored seed. So when this is crossed, the gametes from this yellow is capital Y, whereas gametes from this green is small y. Then this is the F1 generation, a heterozygote that is yellow, then the gametes are capital Y and small y, and finally, the monohybrid ratio is 3 is to 1. On selfing, the monohybrid ratio is 3 is to 1, where 3 are yellow and 1 is green. So this is the phenotypic ratio, monohybrid ratio. It's the same is the case with round and wrinkled seed. And he proposed that one of the character is hidden in the F1 generation, and that is the recessive character. The character that is expressed in the F1 generation is the dominant character. Here the dominant character is yellow and round. So he proposed that distinct traits were controlled by separate factors. Mendel called these factors. At that time, gene was not known. Then the next question he posed was, are they inherited independently of one another or are they linked? If we consider these two factors or two traits together, seed color and seed shape, are they inherited together or are they inherited independently? Let us see how he got his 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio. He was not only a genius in biology or genetics, Mendel was also a genius in max. So he used the product rule. The probability of two or more independent events Occurring is a product obtained by multiplying the probabilities of the individual traits. From the monohybrid cross, he know the probability of individual phenotypic probability, that is yellow seed and green seed, and the second monohybrid ratio of round seed and wrinkled seed. He know individual phenotypic probability of these two characters or two traits. So, using the product rule, multiply the individual phenotypic probability to find out whether this is independent, these are independent events or linked events. So this is how he calculated. The chance of becoming yellow round is, take this probability, individual probability, here it is 3 by 4, here also round, 
it is also 3 by 4 multiplying these two independent events then it will be 3 into 3 9 by 16 then chance of getting yellow wrinkled is yellow seed it is 3 by 4 whereas wrinkled it is 1 by 4 so it is 3 into 1 3 3 by 16 the chance of getting green round is 1 by 4 whereas round is 3 by 4 it is also 3 by 16 and finally green wrinkled will be in the ratio 1 by 4 into wrinkled is 1 by 4 so 1 by 16 so this is the tie hybrid ratio so if these genes are independently assorting he is expecting this ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio then he conducted the experiment he got that tie hybrid ratio let's take the same example yellow round and yellow wrinkled the gametes were capital y r and small y r then this is the first generation heterozygote then it is selfed if these traits are independently assorting then there will be the formation of all possible types of gametes as you see in equal compositional equal proportion here y r the first parental type y r and this is the next parental type small y small r both are formed in 25 percent then the recombinants capital y small r small y capital r all are formed in 25 percent each or in equal proportions then in the phenotype we'll be getting all the possible phenotypes this is the parental phenotype yellow round and green wrinkled so these are the recombinant phenotypes so from this mendel concluded that each gene segregates its allele so you can see that each gamete is pure for an allele this gamete will be pure for an allele gamete can have a capital y or a small y never both then the second point he put forward is the inheritance of two genes or alleles are independent as he got the ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio so the genes or traits are independently assorting without influencing each other and he conducted several experiments using different traits and he got almost the same ratio from that he proposed this tie hybrid ratio and also the law of segregation and law of independent assortment hope this much is clear later only we came to know the reason for the formation of this recombinance now let us see what was actually happening the reason for the formation of this recombinance or recombinant gametes is crossing over or homologous recombination th morgan proposed the term crossing over before th morgan many scientists proposed the mix-up of genes that is happening during meiosis so as you see this is the paternal chromosome and this is a maternal chromosome homologous chromosomes after dna replication it will be having two chromatids then this aligns together then crossing over happens that is the exchange of segments between non-sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes as a result there will be new combination of genes so this is a parental type and these are the recombinants so crossing over is the exchange of dna segments between non-sister chromatids during meiosis prophys of meiosis producing new combination of alleles among offsprings that leads to genetic diversity or genetic recombination so these are the parental types and these are the recombinant ones now let us see how this happens with the same example yellow round and green wrinkled seeds suppose this this is yellow and this is round so these genes are unlinked so as you see these genes are far on the same chromosome then we call it as unlinked then what happens here before crossing over the possible gametes are these are the gametes so y r and small y small r capital y capital r and small y small r so as a result of crossing over there will be exchange of segments between this non-sister chromatids of this homologous chromosome then what will happen is now the chromosome looks like y r capital y small r small y capital r small y small r then we will be having four gametes so as you see this is the first gamete 
So this chromosome will be in a single gamete that is capital Y, capital R, capital Y, small r, small y, capital R, and small y, small r. So all four possible gametes are formed as a result of crossing over. 50% of the gametes are recombinants and the 50% are parental types. Hope this is clear. So let me zoom in this to just make it more clear. As you see, of the four gametes formed, y r, this is the parental type, and the small y, small r, this is also the parental type. And these two, capital Y, small r, and small y, capital R, these two are the recombinants. By crossing over, these recombinants are produced. Now, using this same example, suppose if these genes are linked, what happens? Let us see. So, suppose these genes are linked, y and r, if it is very close together, then we call it as linked genes as the chance of these genes to get inherited together is very high. Suppose these are linked genes. Then the possible gametes are capital Y, capital R and small y, small r. So there won't be any crossing over. As these genes are very close, so the chance of crossing over is nil. Then the possible gametes are capital Y, capital R and small y, small r or in other terms. So when we put it in Punnett square, you can see that we'll be getting only the parental types, yellow round and green wrinkled. Only the parental types are there. If there is no crossing over, there won't be any recombinants. So if the genes are linked, we'll be getting a ratio that is different from 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. And the degree of linkage makes a different ratio. If the genes are completely linked, there won't be any recombinants. Only parental types will be there as shown in this example. And that is very rare also. Now, this was the experiment conducted by Morgan. We'll be discussing that in the next video for a better understanding. So from this experiment using Drosophila, he concluded that the eye color gene is located on the X chromosome. Therefore, the gene for eye color and sex is linked in the case of Drosophila. Or he proposed genetic linkage or genes can be together and genes can be very close or and that can be inherited together. Now let us conclude with the same experiment. How this data is used to make genetic maps. So as you see, these are linked genes. The Both the genes are perfectly linked, completely linked. Then the recombination frequency is zero. So all will be parental types. If genes are unlinked, maximum recombination frequency can be 0.5. That is 50% of offsprings are recombinants and other 50% are parental types. So based on the degree of recombinance or recombination frequency that is 0 to 50%, Morgan and his students assessed the distance between the genes on a chromosome and used that to make chromosome maps or linkage maps. So we'll be discussing that in the next video. Hope this much is clear. If you find this video useful, please consider subscribing our channel. Take care. Stay blessed. Thank you so much for your support. You are with biologyexamsforry.com.